Now let's take a look at base64 encoding and see what problem it solves. Let's say you have some binary data. It could be an image, or it could be compressed data, or it could be compiled data. You want to convert this to text representation. Maybe you want to embed the image in an HTML file, or a CSS file, or an XML file. In that case, you want a mechanism by which you can convert binary data into textual representation, and then convert it back when you need the binary representation. That's where Base64 encoding comes into play. On the screen is an example of binary data, and you see that it's binary data because of the strange characters. After it goes through Base64 encode algorithm, you can see that its text format looks quite different. Similarly, when it goes through the Base64 decode algorithm, you can get the original binary data back. One common use that you will see is to transmit binary data using HTTP POST. For example, in authentication systems like SAML or OpenID Connect, you will frequently see binary data converted to Base64 and then sent over the HTTP POST mechanism. Even after Base64 transformation, if it's used in a URL as a value, then it further needs to be URL encoded. We will actually see this in action when we do hands-on projects in SAML. In summary, Base64 encoding is used to convert binary data into text representation. Once again, Base64 encoding is not encryption. Anyone who has the Base64 encoded data can get the original binary data back. There is no secret key involved. With this, let's move on to the next topic, hashing.